Hey everyone, my name is Claudia. I've been lashing for over three years and I've been with Live Bay for just under two. This channel is dedicated to all things lashes and beauty. And if you haven't already, hit the subscription button below. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about lash tiles, why we use them, how we use them, and everything in between. For lash artists, it's a lot easier to use a lash tile. That way you have the certain lashes that you wanna use for your client handy right next to you. You don't have to dig into a storage container or through all your lash boxes to look for the lengths that you wanna use. So when you're starting to use a lash tile, you wanna label the diameter, which is the thickness that you're gonna use, whether it is mega 0.03 or a volume 0.05 or 0.07. The next thing you wanna label is the name. So for example, for 0.03, that would be mega, and for 0.05, that would be volume. Once you've labeled the diameter and the type of lashes that you're using, you can start to number your, your strips from the shortest to the longest. For example, my, my most common lengths are 9 through 15, so I would label my tile 9 through 15. I usually use about two of each strip. You will also want to leave some space at the top of your tile to put your tape where you're going to be dispensing your glue dots. Also, between each strip that you put on your tile, you're gonna to wanna to leave a little bit of space. You don't want them to be right on top of each other because when you go to pull off lashes from your strip, you won't be able to get them correctly or they'll rip off completely. Another thing that you can do when putting these lash strips on is using an old pair of tweezers. You don't wanna use a new pair of tweezers because you don't wanna bend them or get the sticky residue on the back of your tweezers. Once you pick up your strip with a tweezer, you can then set it on your tile and you can just push on both ends to make sure that the strip is secure. You can get a lash tile anywhere from Lowe's, Home Depot, or even Live Bay. You really just wanna have a surface that's secure and solid so that way your lashes don't fall over or flip over onto your client. You wanna make sure to keep your tile clean by disposing of a used strip once you're done with it and also by keeping it clean from any glue. So that's why it's important to either use a strip of tape or using a jade stone to keep your glue on. You don't wanna put it directly onto your lash tile as it would get messy and get all over the lash extensions. If you ever do get lash glue on your tile, you could use some acetone to save the tile instead of having to get a whole new one. When it comes to storing your lash tiles, you want to make sure to follow your state board. Here at Live Bay, we use containers to keep our tiles in. Your tiles have to fit nice and neat into your container. You can't stack them on top of each other and you have to have a closed lid. There are other alternatives such as using a lash strip onto your hand or a little pad that goes around your wrist um, placed onto your hand as well. The reason we don't use those being that it isn't sanitary according to our state board. When it comes to organizing your lash tiles, you can do it in many different ways. The way I personally organize my lash tiles are by curl. So I'll pull all of my D curl into one tile, whether it is classic 0 0.18, 0 0.15, my volume 0 0.05, and then my mega 0 0.03 all in one tile. I usually like to split up my classic with the top half being 0.15 and the bottom half being 0.18, just so that I can fit it all into one container. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it brought a ton of value to you. If you're looking for any more training or to get certified in lashes, look up livebaylashclass.com and find us in a city near you. Question for you, how do you keep your tiles clean following your local state board? Leave your answer in the comments below and we'll see you in the next video.